The city flooded again. New York City is taking action today by handing out flood barriers to anyone who wants one. Last Friday, my basement, inches on inches of water. The Office of Emergency Management has also issued alerts encouraging people to move to higher ground. To fight water, we have to handle more of it. Our sewer system cannot do it alone. Now New York City leaders are calling for an investigation into how the mayor and his administration responded to the crisis. Extreme weather is a matter of life and death for New Yorkers. You see all that steam? That's how they vent the water out from underneath New York City. And there's a lot of it underneath us right now. The city keeps flooding, and that's because, unfortunately, it's falling apart. And this happens even during normal rainstorms. The sewers, the subways, the roads, they're all completely unable to handle normal storms at this point. This was two weeks ago, and this was this past weekend. People surfing in the streets in certain parts of the city. And that's got residents and city officials really worried because rains and normal thing. There's more rain on the way. It's going to happen regularly. And if these problems happen regularly, living in New York City is going to be very tough, especially in little basement apartments like this one. Is it even a good idea to live in one of these? Many people in New York live in apartments like this because you can save money doing it. But these are the kind of places that could flood. And the city has a new set of tips for people who wanna live below ground, but I don't know if they're gonna work. But before we go over what those are and learn if basement apartments are still a good idea, it's important to understand why New Yorkers are so terrified of any more rain in the first place. New York City is taking action today by handing out flood barriers to anyone who wants one. And while they might be helpful for the future, it is a bit too late for those who suffered so much damage. Yeah, you heard that right. The city is now handing out water barriers and flood pumps to residents. Flood prevention? is now a team effort, but I don't think most of us have the time or the energy to worry about that kind of stuff. New Yorkers are not in New York to stop their apartments and businesses from flooding. But now, instead of just paying crazy rent for a place to live, you can worry about maintaining it while you're at work, hoping it's not full of water when you come back. So today, the city's Department of Environmental Protection handed out hundreds of do-it-yourself flood barriers like this. Just fill them with water and block your doorway. So it looks like a a little water bed but apparently these are a thing this is them on Amazon it looks like they work fairly well in that if you puncture them they stop working honestly this seems like the least the city can do if they're not gonna fix the sewers I saw you once in real life as, uh, before as well but am I a disappointment no, in real life I'm so much shorter than you, you are no you're tall in real life <laughs> like you're yeah, the yeah. flooding did you experience any of it personally no, I live in the East Village now so okay a... did your neighborhood flood or no no I'm on seven so I didn't experience it but I'm from Brooklyn and so I'm sure it, it flooded like... That, yeah, that was like ground zero. Yes. This was my neighborhood of Brooklyn. Cars swimming in the streets, floodwaters up to your waist. And the problems here are because New York is an old city. Not just the buildings, but what is underneath the buildings. That's also really old. The city sewers are 174 years old. They started construction on them in 1849. Also, the sewer system was designed before posterior wipes were invented. And now now that we flush things into the sewer system that clog it up, fatbergs are a thing. According to Wikipedia, these come from fats, oils, grease. So basically you've got a really old sewer system and the stuff going into it is stuff that was never designed to go into it. To fight water, we have to handle more of it. Our sewer system cannot do it alone. So that's it. The sewer system that has one job to remove water from the streets and from your apartment before it gets there, it failed. It can't do it anymore and it needs our help. We gotta hold hands and do this one together, folks. There's just too many people living in New York City right now. The city's also giving out cheap water pumps that could help you get water out of a basement like this and into the street. Now this basement apartment, it's perfectly fine. It doesn't flood. However, if it did, you'd have your little pump on the floor and it would have a hose, which you would want to bring out one of these windows. 
In this apartment's case, you'd want the hose to be long enough to get back out into the street over the curb because if the water comes down here, it's just gonna be headed back towards your front door and it's gonna fill up this entryway area. Now, this building's really well maintained. I wouldn't worry about living in an apartment like this. But apartments that were in the flood zone had waterfalls basically coming down the steps into their units. And in the case of this apartment, you'd want your hose to come all the way out here back to the street. And it's nice that the city's giving out flood barriers, but you're gonna need several to cover these windows and your neighbor, they're gonna have to cover their windows as well. So that's two more. The entryway door is also gonna need one to keep water out. Down the hall, there's a door that leads into another part of the basement right there, which means this area right here is gonna need three more, one for each of these. And we're still not done yet because our little apartment here, which luckily doesn't have any flooding problems, has its own little backyard. It probably wouldn't have this if it were in a flood zone and the landlord knew about it. And that raises an interesting question. If an apartment floods, does the landlord know about it? And should they have to tell you before you move in with all your belongings? That's how it works with bed bugs. If an apartment has bed bugs, the landlord is supposed to tell you about it. Bed bugs were a huge problem back in 2010. And then the city made it a rule that if an apartment had them, the landlord had to let you know. And now in New York, we don't really have bed bug problems. So maybe that's a way to get rid of flooding. With bed bugs, it's a one page document that tells you if there's been an infestation or any activity within the last year. For flooding, I bet you could do the same thing. Last Friday, my basement is flooded. One week after heavy rain and flash flooding inundated city streets and basements, Colleen Boswell is still pumping water out of her home. Oof. I can't imagine living in a place that had standing water in it for one week. You'd have to throw out pretty much everything. If you had a couch, it would be gone. Same thing with whatever was over here. And in this apartment, the bed would go against this wall and most New Yorkers are keeping things under their beds. Just imagine renting an apartment to try and save some money and then it floods and now you gotta spend all new money to recoup your losses. You should have just rented something that had higher rent. Michael Ferraro says the sewer drains in his Flushing neighborhood need to be fixed. This was his home after Ida back in 2021, and this was it last week. So this poor guy, his home was a mess two years ago during an actual hurricane, and it was a mess last week. Now cleaning drains, keeping this stuff clear, this is basic maintenance, and if it's not getting done, you're gonna have problems. And people are wondering why the city isn't paying attention to stuff like this. Is it a lack of resources? Is it mismanagement? What's the problem? Some of the things that you can do to prepare for this next rainstorm, remove all your belongings from the floor, move to a higher level of your home, avoid flooded areas, and notify NYC is something you should download. So there you have it. Get out of the basement, clean your room, don't live like a slob. This is what your mother would tell you if you'd listen to her. Now, even if you don't live in a basement, mold is something everybody needs to worry about because even a little bit of untreated water damage could mean you have to move out of your apartment that you just moved into because it's unsafe. My ceiling got hammered. That's our living room. This is the bedroom. Look at that. We had water damage running all the way down the wall, right over here behind the AC. You can see that there's more damage. And I'm not living in a basement apartment or a roof apartment. I am somewhere in the middle. And I did that specifically because I didn't want water issues. But that's not the real issue here. The real issue is that basement apartments are flooding with water that comes in off the street and from the roads. And those are the city's job to maintain and fix, but they're not for some reason. Saturated ground, nowhere for the water to go. Nowhere for you. It's like yeah. putting, uh, I always say, putting water on a waterlogged sponge. It can't absorb anymore, so any rain we pick up is going to be a problem, gang. So best of luck. Eh? That's where we are. You and you want to know why that is? Well, if you haven't noticed, New York City is a concrete jungle. And if you pour some water out on the ground like this, you'll notice that it doesn't absorb particularly well. It just sits there and has to roll down the street to go find a drain. How long will that process take? Well, you're looking at it. And critics of how the city's handling this are saying that they've had plenty of time to find these problems and fix these problems, especially because two years ago there was a massive storm. But the storm two years ago was a hurricane, and it's reasonable to assume that during a hurricane there will be flooding, there will be things that city infrastructure is not prepared for. But it exposed a lot of drainage problems, waterway problems, issues with streets clearing waste. 
all of which have just been getting worse because basic maintenance hasn't been getting done. And we keep building new buildings. Look at that. And since the recent storms and issues were caused by normal weather patterns, the city is now investigating itself to find out why these problems happened. I wonder what they're gonna discover. New York City leaders are calling for an investigation into how the mayor and his administration responded to the crisis. Extreme weather is a matter of life and death for New Yorkers. A matter of life and death. And that's why the city is investigating itself. Certain departments handle certain things like maintenance, waterway clearing, drain clearing, and they want to figure out if this is the mayor's fault, if this is some department's fault, whose fault is it that streets were flooded and that kids were in school when it happened. Public school students were picked up from their homes on city school buses and dropped off at their classrooms and were seated in their desks while their schools flooded. My daughter was one of them. We had to go get her early. The mayor says that if you didn't know the storm was coming, you were living under a rock. And that's why people are wondering why were kids in school when this happened? Did the city implement new guidelines? And is there more to be done for the next storm? You know, it was a whole myriad of challenges. Uh, some of it can be helped, can be mitigated by infrastructure investments and improvements. There you have it, folks, infrastructure investments. But that's gonna mean opening up city streets and replacing stuff you and I can't see on a day-to-day -day basis. That's gonna be incredibly expensive and it's gonna take an incredibly long period of time. Now I get it, New York City is a tough city to run, 8.5 million people. And recently there have been multiple crises inflicted upon New York. Over 100,000 people have come to the city this year seeking asylum and that's a massive drain on city resources. Critics are saying the city has bitten off way more than it can chew right now. And the city's only got so many resources. Right now they're being used to support people who've just arrived and need help, but they also need to be used to fix the place so that we can all still live here and stay here and enjoy it. But on the other hand, the remnants of Hurricane Ida flooded parts of New York City. This was a really big storm and this took place before the current crises in New York even happened. Two years ago, it was made pretty obvious that the city's waterways needed work. And the city's had two years to stay at pace with population expansion, which hasn't been happening apparently. And perhaps politically using the city's resources to fix things that aren't an immediate problem. If there's no flood and no one's complaining, people are gonna wonder why you're fixing things like sewers that seem to be working correctly. And it could be that this is the type of problem that doesn't get dealt with in a representative government until we're all paddling canoes down the streets and we all hate our lives and wanna move out. And the big question is, do New Yorkers deserve the mess that they are in? And the bigger question is do you want to rent that basement apartment which doesn't flood from me for $3,500 a month? I'll see you in the next video.